Hey, it's Russell with SP, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at servicing the Shocker XLS regulator. To do that, we'll simply need some factory lubricant, 5 16 Allen key, and a nice clean rag. If you have it, a dental pick does come in handy in order to remove O-rings should you need to take anything off to exchange it or just to clean underneath it. We'll also be taking a look at some basic troubleshooting with the reg. And to do that, we're going to start by showing you the outside diagnostic holes. Now, the XLS comes with the factory reg cover installed. We're going to go ahead and remove that so I can show you some details. Regulator cover just slides off the bottom. And you see it does have a number of slots which correspond to the diagnostic holes on the back of the regulator. These holes are put in place to vent when particular O-rings have been compromised to help you understand before you even get into the regulator what you might need to service or address. Basic maintenance doesn't require removing this reg cover, but it does make things simpler for us to handle and easier for you to see in the video. So let's go ahead and start taking down the regulator and performing the service. To start the regulator service process, we want to make sure that there's absolutely no air in the marker. We've removed the tank, and now we're going to eject the bolt system and set it aside just to make sure that there's no air anywhere in the system. To start removing our regulator components, we're going to access the base of the regulator and use the 5 16 Allen face that's in black anodized aluminum that you see here. The silver Allen key face that you see below it is actually your velocity adjuster, so you won't be able to remove your reg by adjusting that. So we're going to take our 5 16 Allen, insert it in the tool face, and start unscrewing. There are two important things to make note of here. First, I'm using the square end of my Allen key so that I'm getting maximum engagement with the tool surface. Second, the part I'm removing is under a slight bit of spring tension. So when I reach the end of the threads, it's going to eject slightly. I want to make sure I have my tool nice and steady so that I don't send parts anywhere once I reach the end of these threads. As you can see, just as I reach the end of the threads, it did pop out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and set my tool aside. And with everything just like that, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn the marker upside down so that I can pull the parts out. Now, what has come out is the pressure release valve assembly. The cap may come off. We're going to go ahead and set it right back down for right now, O-ring side, towards this little brass nipple here. And again, we're just going to set that to the side for now. Looking up into the regulator, you can see one of the two springs utilized in the RSX regulator. And the red object you see behind it is the new XLS regulator piston. Now, what's unique about this is that the spring is actually retained inside the piston in this particular configuration. Previous generations of Shocker did not have this, so if this is your first time working on an XLS, don't worry, it's supposed to be like that. Now, what's unique about the spring being retained by the piston is it makes it very easy to retrieve the piston and spring itself because you can reach up there quite easily with your dental pick and secure the spring and draw it out with the piston attached. Alternatively, you can take the marker and against the palm of your hand, give it a few solid taps and the assembly will come out. Either way is fine. We've done it this way just because you're more likely at home not to have a dental pick. With the piston out, you're going to have your main regulator spring, which you can set aside, your regulator piston, and again, the secondary spring is actually retained by the regulator piston. It's not threaded or anything like that. It's simply got an O-ring that retains it, so you can simply pull the two apart. And this is as far as you'll need to take the regulator for basic service. The final component of the regulator actually will remain in the body most of the time. Normal service doesn't require removing this part, but for the sake of the video, we're going to go ahead and remove it now. Once again, you will only need the 5 16 Allen key for basic maintenance, but if you're going to remove the upper part of the reg, 
you will need another Allen key. The Allen key you will need is a quarter inch Allen key. What we're going to do is insert the quarter inch Allen key up into the regulator body and you'll feel it engage the upper regulator component. Go ahead and turn that loose. You'll actually feel it come away from the threads and then using your Allen key, insert it into the base of the component and draw it out of the body. Now we've removed all the internals of the Shocker XLS regulator. And as I mentioned before, this upper component is generally going to remain inside the body. With all the regulator components out of the body, let's take another look at the diagnostic holes we mentioned earlier. First, the lower vent hole corresponds to a single O-ring, and it's the O-ring on the outside of the pressure release valve body. The second hole corresponds to three different O-rings, the most likely of which is here on the regulator piston. The second is inside the upper regulator platform. You can actually see in the video here this white O-ring down inside. And the final likelihood is this lower O-ring here on the upper part of the regulator base. Again, that is for the middle diagnostic hole. The upper diagnostic hole indicates one of two O-rings. The upper two O-rings here on the regulator base. Be once again, because this part does not come out often, these are fairly unlikely to fail. But what you want to do is make sure they're thoroughly lubricated upon installation, and that will ensure a long life. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and take a reasonable amount of lube and go ahead and put it on those two upper O-rings. We're going to put a small amount of lube on the body O-ring. And finally, just a little bit in the actual hole here. Now the reason for that is when we put our tool in, we want to make sure that any chance that the tool comes in contact with that O-ring surface that it's nice and lubricated and we're not going to do any damage to that O-ring. So reinstallation, very simple. Simply going to reinsert it into the body and thread until snug. With that in, we can now take a look at what makes up our normal maintenance. The heart of our normal maintenance will be the regulator piston. What we're going to do is make sure that the O-ring that it rides on is clean, well lubricated, and free of any damage. The other important portion of the regulator piston is the regulator seat, located at the nose of the piston. When we're in here, we want to inspect that seat to make sure that it is clean and free of abrasion. It should have a glossy appearance and it should be fairly smooth across its surface. In the instance of extreme velocity spikes in the early part of your stream, and what I mean, I mean by that is if the marker sets for a while and then your first shot is incredibly high, it does likely indicate a damaged or failed regulator seat. In the instance of extreme velocity inconsistencies, where you have what we call velocity hanging, so the regulator uh, is essentially hanging the velocity high or low, so you'll get several shots, either too high or too low, and then it'll return to normal, can generally indicate either improper lubrication or some damage to this O-ring here on the piston. So what we want to do is go ahead and lubricate the regulator piston, we're just using enough lube to fill in either sides of the O-ring in the piston there. Next, we'll take what remaining lube is on our fingers and we're just going to lightly apply it to the tip of the regulator piston. Now, we're not applying this to the regulator seat, but instead the edges. That O-ring that we indicated earlier in the upper regulator component 
engages with this surface. So again, we're just making sure that anytime those surfaces engage, that there's lubrication involved. Reassembly is as simple as inserting the secondary spring, and again, this is a captured spring. You're going to insert it in the base of the regulator piston, and it just, again, presses into place. There's no threading or anything like that. It simply presses in and is retained by a black Buna O-ring on the inside of that piston face. We'll then put our regulator spring back on and assert that assembly down into the regulator body. And you can see it's nice and seated inside the body. The final component to go back in the regulator is the pressure release valve assembly. Now this assembly is an actual valve that opens whenever pressure is exceeded in the regulator. This is going to happen in the case of a regulator seat fail or some other situation where the shocker needs to vent pressure in order to protect your electronics and other seals inside the body. When this valve activates, it will vent pressure through the velocity adjustment screw, but again, it does not require any type of regular maintenance. We just want to make sure that it's properly assembled. Removing the cap, you can see there's an O-ring on the base side. That's always going to go back on facing the small brass pin you see here. On top of that pin, is also an alignment disc. That alignment disc keeps the pin centered in the valve body. And finally, the actual piston and spring themselves. All that's going to go back together, spring first, piston, alignment disc, and finally, the cap. Once all those are together, we can go ahead and insert it into the regulator body. When we insert it in the regulator body, we're going to go straight in. And as you can tell, there is some spring tension on the part as it compresses the PRV spring as well as the secondary spring in the regulator. So we're going to take our 5 16 Allen key once again and compress that spring until we can feel it touch the threads. And keeping that pressure, we're going to go ahead and start threading the part into the marker. Now there shouldn't be a ton of spring tension, but you want to keep your hand on the tool so that you're consistently applying pressure. That'll prevent you from cross-threading or even skipping a thread. Once it stops turning, you're good to go. There's no reason to snug this up or apply any additional torque. With that back together, you've fully serviced and disassembled your Shocker XLS regulator.